Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Budapest here where it's definitely getting dark a lot earlier in the day in the northern hemisphere. It's already quite dusky out there and getting darker by the minute. Um, welcome students. I see many members already in the class. Hi Chabi. Hi Sheng Hung. Hi Daniil. Hello everyone. Uh, today's class, we are kicking this week off with speaking part one, some practice and some strategy with some new original questions. We did just release a new speaking video for you with a Turkish candidate. Uh, so check that out. This lesson is brought to you by aehelp.com where you can go for the academic version of the exam and for the general version of the exam, check us out at G-I-E-L-T-S help dot com. On both of those websites, you will find over 100 hours of video lessons, a fully interactive course for your phone, tablet, PC, as well as six original practice exams. I'll show those to you real quick. This is the academic website here. And if you are from Saudi Arabia, like Ali Al Omar, hello, Saudi Arabia, you can also register for your next IELTS exam through our website. We are British Council IELTS Registration Center Partners. So uh, that's for students in Saudi Arabia. We're going to get some other countries on board soon. All right. For the general IELTS, it's this green background here. Click that big red button to join us on that website. You can also download our application from your Android or iOS app stores. Look for our shield search for academic IELTS help. If you have questions about the exam students or about our products, don't be shy. Send me an email. My email is Adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N at aehelp.com. Um, we have a little bit of an interesting schedule coming up in the next couple weeks, so I'll quickly share that with you. Uh, today, speaking part one, uh, tomorrow we'll start a task two with members a little bit earlier in the day. Then we will do a reading passage tomorrow at this time. And then we'll do some more task two listening. On Saturday, there's no class. That's a little correction to the previous schedule. And then we will actually have class Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday on 17th, 18th, and 19th um, because I will be away from the 20th to the 25th. So classes will continue on the 26th. Please take note of that upcoming schedule. I also posted that on uh, our YouTube community bulletin board, okay? So make sure you take note of that. All right, students. Uh, so this is a speaking class. Oh, by the way, during this time when I'm away uh, from the 20th to the 25th, we will be uploading um, HD video lessons to the channel. So you'll definitely have some fresh study material. So don't worry. It's not like you're going to have a big gap. We will make sure that you have materials and videos to study from. And of course, on our websites, you can find lots and lots of materials. Okay, uh, so students... This is, and I'm glad you're picking that up. I do see in your comments that you got it and you're picking up on what I'm putting down. So that's great. Um, students, so this is a speaking class and uh, the technology is not there yet where I can actually hear you speak. Although it'd be beautiful to hear all of your 135 voices. But I do want to imagine and hear you wherever you are in the world right now. So when I say a sentence, when I ask a question, when I uh, read one of your peers' comments or responses, please repeat me, okay? So as best as you can, even if you don't catch every single word, it's fine, just repeat. If you catch some new words, some new vocabulary, Write it down. If you have a pen, paper for this class, that's a good idea, okay? So make sure to speak and repeat as much as possible in this class, all right? 
We'll warm up with some examiner uh, icebreaker questions. When you go to your speaking interview, then make sure you're a little bit early, okay? And um, when you go in, be confident, take a deep breath. You're there to do your best. You can't learn English in the last five minutes, so don't worry about it. Be confident, okay? There's lots of other students. The sun will shine tomorrow. And uh, let's just go through these. So first, the examiner will greet you. They'll say, welcome, please take your seat. Repeat, please take your seat. Then you say, thank you. And then they'll begin with, may I see your identification? They will always ask for it. That's the protocol, that's the procedure. In the exam, they have to ask you for it. If you don't present it, they cannot do that part of the exam. So, may I see your identification, please? Chabi says, yes, yeah, sure, let me get it from my handbag. Here you are. Uh, please take a look. You're getting very creative, Chabi. It's good. I like it. Creativity is key to success. Uh, Pachu says, yes, of course. Here you are. Please have a look at it. Take a look over it. It's a little bit awkward, Pachu, because it's just an ID. Um, take a look over it would be a longer document. Good try though, Pachu, but for an ID, it's awkward because an ID is just a small card um, or a passport. We don't take a look over it because it's not that much information. Although good try, okay, good try with that. All right, um, Marasa says, definitely, yeah. Uh, this is my passport. Please have a look, ma'am or sir, depending on the gender, of course. Marasa, nice, I like how you're adding your original diction. Diction means your original style uh, to that response. That's great, that earns you points. Okay, being original students is very important in the speaking section of the exam. Uh, Violet Newen says, yes, of course, here you are. Carolina says, yes, sure, here you are, please take a look. Okay, absolutely, show your fluency right off the bat, right away, show your fluency, Carolina, good. All right, Harjeet says, how can we uh, give a natural face or impression like native speakers? Um, Harjeet, that's a good question. Do what these students have done so far that I read. Be yourself, find different ways to answer questions make sure they're accurate, be confident, and you will come across as natural, okay? All right, so lots of great ways. Um, I like uh, Chabi's creativity, so I'll do a little bit of the same myself. Uh, yes, of course, just let me get my passport. You know what, give you a little bit of even more diction here, just let me dig out my passport from my pocket and here you are please take a look especially if you're wearing like uh, some tight pants tight jeans or something and your passport's really stuck in there um, then uh, you could use this kind of English here yes of course just let me dig it out of my pocket or just let me dig out my passport from my pocket here I'll change a little bit let's do it this way okay yes of course just let me dig it out of my pocket and here you are please take a look whatever that might be your passport or your national ID okay uh, when something's kind of stuck in our pockets we say we dig it out of our pocket oh, like we're digging all right, it is informal uh, on Diden, but it is okay to use informal English in the speaking section, especially at the beginning. So on Diden, good question, dig out, would be an informal expression, phrasal verb here, and um, it works, okay? So uh, next um, question. So you use both formal and informal language students in the speaking section. In the beginning, uh, the icebreakers, part one, it's more informal language. Part two, part three becomes more formal language. Hi, Preeti. Nice to see you joining in. 
Okay, um, so let's go to the next question. What is your full name? Of course, when you give your ID to the examiner, uh, they will look at it carefully. Don't be weirded out by that. They're instructed to carefully look at the picture and you. And then they will say, okay, uh, what is your full name? Okay. Happy says, my full name is Harpreet Singh Gill. Uh, please just call me by my nickname, Happy. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. I like that nickname. All right. Um, Daniel says, well, my given name is Daniel, and the family uh, name is Tarasov. So um, please call me uh, Daniel. Okay, Daniel. Uh, interesting, your name is Daniel, but I guess it's Daniel then. Okay, got it. Jaswant Singh says, my name is Jaswant Singh. Please call me Jaswant. That works. Simple to the point. Uh, Hikmatillo says, well, my given name is Hikmatillo. My surname is Rachmanov. So please just refer to me as Hikmatillo. That makes sense. Yeah. And students, uh, say your nickname or tell the examiner right away what you want him or her to call you because they will ask you. They're also instructed to ask, what should I call you? Okay. They, they do that because they want you to feel comfortable. So they want you to, they want to call you by a name that you feel comfortable being called. Okay. They don't want that to be a problem. They don't want that uh, the name to make you nervous if it's not the name that you're used to. Uh, Avalon Diaz says, my given name and surname are Souza Diaz, and then you retracted the message, but it was good, okay? Uh, Hitanshu Loria says, my full name is Hitanshu. You can call me Hitanshu. I think that works better. Okay, all right. So, um... My given name is David and my family name is McLeod. Uh, please just call me, it's a good Scottish name, David McLeod. Please just call me Dave, okay? So simple can be beautiful. Don't overdo your speaking students. So don't be too colorful for every question. That's awkward. Uh, some questions you might want to be a little bit more colorful, a little bit more expressive for other questions. Maybe keep it a little bit simpler, especially at the beginning. Okay. Now, um, repeat after me. My given name is David and my family name is McLeod. Uh, please just call me Dave. All right, Dave, where do you live? Okay, that's a very common question for these icebreaker questions. So where do you live? Chabi says, I live in a small town in the east of Algeria called uh, Sokaras, which is 500 kilometers away from the capital and known as the home of lions. Interesting. Okay. There's a little cute picture of my daughter. My camera seems to have this wonderful uh, falling asleep once every week pattern. It's the ghost in the machine, I'm starting to call it, because it only happens the one time. Interesting. Interesting. Mystery indeed. All right. So there we are. And continuing on, uh, Daniel Tarasov says, I'm currently living in the central part of Western Russia in the tranquil and cheerful city of Penza. Nice description, Daniel. I'll keep reading here. Okay, so repeat this one after me, students, because Daniel's got a really nice response here. So I'm currently living in the central part of Western Russia in the tranquil and cheerful city of Penza, which is my hometown. I live in a spacious and expensive three uh, bedroom flat with my lovely parents. Very good. Daniel, you remembered that for this question, it's good to name both your residence and the location of where you live. So, um, 
I live in a modern uh, two bedroom and two bathroom apartment in the heart of Budapest, close to the Danube uh, River. And the city is the capital of Hungary in Central Europe. All right. So uh, repeat after me. Uh, where do you live? I live in a modern two-bedroom and two-bathroom apartment in the heart of Budapest, close to the Danube River. And the city is the capital of Hungary in Central Europe. All right. So again, this where do you live? Keep that in mind. Right away, you can show your coherence, your quantitative language, uh, give the location of your town as well as uh, give the residence, so the house or the apartment where you live. Okay, uh, good job. I see some more excellent answers coming up. And I'll read a couple more of them. So Preeti Juglan says, Sir, I'm a very simple student. I can't speak English very well. My English language is just understandable. I want to clear my IELTS without any type of coaching. Please help me. Ooh, Breeti, that's a big ask. It's like wanting to climb a mountain without uh, a hiking stick. I'm not sure if that's possible. All right. Um, Sankalp Pandev says, I'm a native of a large industrial city, Kanpur, which is located on the banks of the Ganges River in North India in the state of Uttar Pradesh. Uh, Sun Club, really nice answer, okay? So you gave very good description of your hometown. Just one tiny little um, addition to make it even better to get that band nine. Uh, say where you live. So you can say, I'm a native of a large industrial city, uh, Kapoor, which is located on the banks of the Ganges River in North India in the state of Uttar Pradesh. And I live in a two bedroom apartment with my lovely wife and two children. So just that little bit more, okay? Just that little bit more for that question will guarantee you a good score. Uh, Joanne, Justy, our member says, I currently live in a two bedroom apartment in Western Malaysia, precisely in Greenfield, which is a small city. I think, by the MA. Uh, Justine, um, I currently live, or I am currently living. Careful, Joanne, with that uh, B verb, ING. So remember, students, ING always needs B, okay? So whenever you're using the progressive form of the verb, um, then, or the continuous form, you need that B verb, am. Okay, so ing always needs be. Just remember this little rhyme and you should be okay. Okay. Uh, Varvara Lexe is asking, what does it mean in the heart of? Um, in the heart of Budapest uh, means that it's the center of the city. Okay, so the downtown core area of a larger city is called the heart of the city. It's where all the tourists are, it's where all the restaurants, the shops, that's the heart of the city. And you do want to use this kind of language, like heart of, uh, in your exam, because the band score for lexical resource uh, does state that a band seven or higher student can use this type of idiomatic or expressive language, okay? Students, idiomatic language doesn't mean uh, using complex idioms, okay? So let me make a note for you here, and this is important, okay? So one of the parameters that gives your mark in the speaking section is called lexical resource, okay? Now lexical resource, means vocabulary 
uh, vocabulary, but it also means uh, kind of like diction, expressive style, use of idiomatic language. And use of idiomatic language is not the same as using idioms, okay? That's kind of confusing, um, but I'll make that clear. So with idioms here, I mean like complex idioms. So complex idiom would be uh, don't throw bricks if you live in a glass house, okay? So this means um, do not be a hypocrite, all right? Um, so this is a complex idiom. Don't throw bricks if you live in a glass house. It means uh, do not be a hypocrite, okay? You don't necessarily have to use these kinds of idioms in the speaking section to get a good band score. These complex phrasal idioms uh, can be very tricky to use well. You have to be really certain that you're using it correctly. Otherwise, it can be very awkward and it can actually count against you. It can make your coherence score go down. But you can use idiomatic language. Idiomatic language can be much simpler, okay? So idiomatic language, we've already used a couple here. Um, in the beginning, when we said, just let me dig it out from my pocket. So digging out your passport from your pocket, this is also idiomatic language. It's a phrasal verb and it's idiomatic language. This is all you need to do to get above band seven. I know all you need to do. It's more tricky than it sounds, but you don't need to use these very tricky long idioms, okay? So uh, another one here is to live in the heart of Budapest. Living in the heart of Budapest is also idiomatic language, okay? So you don't have to go over the top with idioms. Careful, okay, careful. All right, um, so let's go to the next question. Maybe some of you already jumped the gun and got to this one, okay? Um, so uh, what do you like about your home? What do you like about your home, okay? Preeti says, I love my home because not only is it very spacious, almost 2,000 square meters, but also it is equipped with all the modern amenities that make my work easy every day. Preeti, 2,000 square meters? That's huge. Uh, that's not a home, that's a castle. Uh, I think maybe you, you're thinking 200 square meters. 200 square meters is still a very large home by any standards, okay? So 2,000 is a, you live in a castle, Preeti. Um, all right, uh, Carolina Asano says, my apartment is spacious and comfortable. I live on the ninth floor, so I enjoy the view of the city and the uh, brightness in the morning, okay? Um, brightness in the mornings and the sunrise in the morning, I would say, Carolina, the sunrise. In the morning or the sun shining through my windows in the morning brightness in the morning is a little bit awkward it's understandable okay um let's see uh simran kaur says i gave my exam last month simran send me an email okay um shang hung sai says the favorite part of my home is my bedroom which has not only a piano, but also a TV that I enjoy spending time watching at night. Um, Sheng Hung, uh, this question is, what do you like about your home? Saying that you like just your bedroom, I guess it's okay. It's a little bit awkward. It's like you're specifying one room, okay? Um, pretty 2,000 square feet would be okay instead of 2,000 square meters. Okay, all right. 
John Wolf says, I love my home because it is peaceful where I live away from the city noise. Okay, all the noise pollution of the city. All right. Harjeet Singh says, well, everything which is in my home I like probably because I'm living there since my childhood. But the aspect that impresses me the most is the living room as I spend most of my time there. And what do you like about your living room, Harjeet? Is it spacious? Is it bright? Is the furniture unique? Uh, do you have a large 80-inch uh, television? So give me a little bit of detail, okay? I really like the 10-foot ceilings in my home. It makes the rooms feel very spacious. Not only that, but I also enjoy living on the top floor. So there are beautiful vistas of the Danube River out my windows and there is nobody making noise above me. All right. So here we go. Repeat after me. What do you like about your home? I really like the 10 foot ceilings in my home. It makes the rooms feel very spacious. Not only that, but I also enjoy living on the top floor. So there are beautiful vistas of the Danube River out my windows and there is nobody making noise above me. All right, fantastic. So that's it for the um, icebreaker questions. Now the examiner will say, okay, uh, now I will ask you some questions on a general topic. Let's talk about flowers. All right, now, uh, some people might go, ooh, really flowers? I'm not a big flower guy. Uh, what should I do? Um, and some of you might think, uh, well, I'll just say I'm not really into flowers, so I don't know much about them. Uh, but don't do that, okay? So here's a really important tip, okay? Students, keep this in mind. It is much more challenging to show high level expressive English with negative responses. Okay, so for example, I'm not really into flowers. By the way, I'm not really into is also idiomatic language, okay? So I'm not really into flowers, so I can't really say which species is my favorite, okay? Um, so this type of language, it's the negative response, even though it may be the truth, it can be a lot more challenging to show a high level of English with negative responses. So I strongly encourage you for the IELTS exam to choose the positive side, even if that means giving false answers and just be creative. Keep your mind open. I'm sure that most of you know the name of at least one or two types of flowers in English, like roses, tulips, daffodils. I'm sure you'll come up with one or two, all right? Uh, again, answering in the negative is a lot more challenging. I highly, highly 
recommend staying away from negative responses. If you say one or two negative responses in all of the speaking, maybe. But if every second answer you give is, I'm not really into that, I don't know much about that, it's unlikely that you will get a good band score. Okay, so keep that in mind. Also, one more tip for today. Okay, so tip, keep in mind, the IELTS exam, oh, let me get my camera back online here. I have a feeling I know why the camera's doing that. It's because I'm using a different camera today than last week. I have to change the settings, so just bear with me. I'll keep an eye on that. Okay, all right, so uh, keep in mind, students, that the IELTS exam is a graded test, okay? So what does that mean? Um, it's just like the SATs, for example, or the MIT or, or the MCAT or the bar exam, um, which are also graded tests. I think the green exam is another one. Um, a graded exam means it gets more and more difficult, okay? is more and more challenging, okay? Um, so what that means is speaking part one is the easiest part of the speaking. So the speaking takes about 12 to 15 minutes. Um, each section, takes, uh, part one takes about five minutes, part two takes about three and a half minutes, part three takes about six minutes or so. Um, and each part becomes more and more challenging, okay? So each part is more and more difficult, all right? Now, the examiner is grading you in real time as you're doing your speaking. So they're thinking, okay, this student is a band level X, this student is a band level Y, okay? So the IELTS is a graded exam. This means each section uh, is more and more challenging. So that means part one, is the easiest, okay? Part two is more difficult, and part three is most difficult, okay? So, why is that important? That's important because in part one, you want to come across at least as a band eight, band nine level speaker, okay? And you want to, of course, maintain that as much as possible throughout your speaking, but it is challenging to keep that same band level as in part one all the way to the end of part three. Now, maybe some of you watched the new uh, speaking video that we put up with the Turkish candidate uh, yesterday. Uh, and I know that some people commented. They say, wow, she's pretty good. She should get a band eight, not a band seven. Um, and maybe we were a little bit harsh. She's maybe a band seven five. What's interesting about her speech, if you watch that video uh, after this lesson, is that she's definitely a strong band eight for part one. Even her part two is quite good, maybe a band eight, but part three is weaker. When we get into the more detailed, more expressive, specific topics, definitely her band score drops and that pulls her band from an eight to a seven five, certainly. Sevens may be a bit harsh for her, but definitely a seven five. So that's why she can't get that band aid. It's because of her part three performance. The reason I'm telling you that is because absolutely you want to make sure that you're doing as good of job as possible in part one. Okay, keep that in mind. All right, so with that in mind, let's focus on part one questions. So part one questions, let's talk about flowers. So how often do you buy flowers? Okay, 
Give me a nice answer for that one. How often do you buy flowers? All right. Let's see some answers. Murasa says, well, I frequently purchase uh, artificial and natural flowers either for decoration in my bedroom or for my friends. Just yesterday, I bought roses from a local flower shop for my friend Sarah's birthday, who's also my best friend. Okay, uh, Marasa, I changed your uh, grammar, your word order a little bit to be more natural. Pay attention to that. Okay. Chabi says, well, usually two times a year. Uh, first, for my mother's birthday. Secondly, for Mother's Day, as my mother loves getting flowers on those special days. Uh, but it could increase depending on the occasion. Chabi, very good. Yeah. Okay. Most of us definitely buy flowers at least for Mother's Day. All right. Um... Cristobal Fernandez says, I don't buy flowers very often. In my opinion, it's more common to purchase flowers in the past. However, I bought a lovely bouquet of flowers for my girlfriend a few months ago, and she was delighted. Okay, Cristobal Fernandez, good. So you started a little bit negative, but then you switched to the positive, and you said, however, I did buy a bouquet for my girlfriend a few months ago, and she was delighted. So that's good. Okay, that's nice expressive language. That's what you want to do. That's why you want to focus on the positive. Okay. Sanya Adnan says, I love flowers. And usually I buy them on special occasions. Every flower has its own significance, even Though I have planted many small flowers in my garden, I have marigold, red roses in my garden. As such, not, or even I have planted, okay, I see, sorry, Sonia. So significance, even I have planted many flowers in my small garden. I have marigold and red roses. Okay, don't repeat garden, Sonia, but good. Otherwise, quite, quite accurate, good. All right, so... I seldom buy flowers. I would say roughly half a dozen times throughout the year, mostly on special occasions such as birthdays and Mother's Day. In fact, I just purchased a few red roses for my wife's birthday last month. All right, great. So being expressive and giving answers, explanations, and examples. Repeat after me. I seldom buy flowers, I would say roughly half a dozen times throughout the year, mostly on special occasions such as birthdays and Mother's Day. In fact, I just purchased a few red roses for my wife's birthday last month, okay? Uh, if you can use the word seldom, do so. Seldom is a nice word to replace rarely. Rarely is more common. Seldom is maybe a bit higher level for lexical resource. All right, let's go to the next question. What is your favorite flower? Here we go. What is your favorite flower? Give me a nice full sentence answer for that question. Amethi Doc says, I am fond of a variety of flowers. However, 
If asked specifically, I would rate roses as my top choice due to their splendid, vibrant red color and refreshing fragrant fragrance. I'm Aitha Doc. It's a nice answer. Okay. Um, I'm a fond of a variety of flowers is not necessary. I would just start with roses and then maybe give a little bit more information about roses. So stick with the specific answer okay always be as specific as possible carolina says my favorite flower is the girasol because i'm amazed by how this flower turns towards the sun i always stare at it and smell girasols when i find them in the market okay i'm not familiar with that flower carolina but sounds incredible indeed Uh, Pachuya Dove says, my favorite flower is the rose because it signifies love and respect. On the other hand, I like its shape. Uh, not on the other hand, Pachu, because it's not a contrast. Furthermore, furthermore, I like its shape and color. Um, just on Valentine's Day, I gave a rose to my wife. Very nice, Pachu, to express my deep love for her, right? Okay, good. Uh, Danielle uh, Tarasov says, actually, I adore a bunch of different flowers, but if I uh, had to pick a favorite, it would definitely be the rose. I enjoy their saturated red color as well as their pleasurable and fresh smell. Daniel, very nice. Nice use of the word saturated. Saturated is a synonym in this case that Daniel is using to express rich, like a rich red color. Okay. All right. Hitanshu says, my favorite flower is the lavender as it has uh, pros on the fragrance. I've heard it's also good for the skin as well. There's nothing like those beautiful purple lavenders. Hitanshu, yeah, lavenders are beautiful. We do use them as fragrances for a variety of different purposes. Absolutely. Uh, Kiki Chung says, I would say chamomile is my favorite flower as it not only gives out a nice frag fragrance, but also makes a soothing tea when it's dried and has extremely powerful anti-inflammatory properties to heal a variety of illnesses. Right, Kiki? Very good. All right. The flower I love the most is the peace lily. I enjoy its unique shape and pure white color. In fact, I have had a peace lily in my home for the past two decades. She is like a member of the family. All right, kind of giving you my own unique twist to that answer. Um, here you go. What is your favorite flower? The flower I love the most is the peace lily. I enjoy its unique shape and pure white color. In fact, I have had a peace lily in my home for the past two decades. She is like a member of the family. All right. Great answers. By the way, students, uh, a little bit of an applause. Uh, I'm really impressed by the answers and the variety of answers and flowers that many of you gave. Um, so uh, chamomile and rose and many, many, many others as well, marigold and so on. So really good job. And that is point in case to being original. That's how you get those high scores and answering positive. Okay. It's much, much better than saying, I'm not really into flowers, so I don't have a favorite. Ooh, okay. I can give you a band six, 6.5 for that. Okay. 
but it's hard to give you more band scores if you answer like that because I don't really know your English ability. So, um, yeah, all right. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, do you like to have flowers in your home? Now, in part one, the examiner's question sheet has these uh, bracketed or parentheses, why, why not? That's because uh, they will ask you why or why not uh, if you do not answer on your own. The trick to get a better score is to make sure that you include the reason in your answer. Okay, so do you like to have flowers in your home? Say, yes, I do because. Okay, so always explain your responses. All right. Wakas Nawaz says, without any doubt, I would say having a few beautiful flowers in my home is crucial. Uh, not only because it gives a nice fragrance to the air, but also soothing for my eyes. Um, Wakas, notice how I did a very important change in your response. So Wakas, you're saying, without any doubt, I would say having a, a flower in the home is crucial. So you're keeping it objective you're not talking about yourself but in part one you'll notice that the uh, question students are focusing on you these are personal and that's why you can use informal language in fact you should so um, in these cases your answers should always be thinking I I me my my home I like to have okay uh, if you remove yourself from the subject and say people should have flowers in your home, it's kind of off topic, okay? You're not answering accurately, so be very, very careful, right? So wakas, change all those to I, me, my, I like having a fragrance in my home, it's soothing on my eyes, okay? Uh, Joy Ann Libao says, I absolutely love to decorate my home with flowers because they give life to my place. Aside from that, they uplift my spirit whenever I see them, on the coffee table uh, in my living room, okay? On my coffee table, Joy, because it's on your coffee table. All right. Hank says, I do love daisies as I've got an inherent interest in this type of flower. Furthermore, not only does it keep me feeling pumped up, but also helps me to stay positive. So, I always make sure to have some daisies lying around my home. I realize, Hank, you're answering the previous question, but uh, we can answer this one as well by finishing with, I make sure to have daisies frequently around my home. Okay. All right. We've got some more coming up. Pankaj Pant says, yes. I have planted a myriad of saplings and flowers on my terrace. My father likes to plant saplings. It looks good on the terrace and raises the status of our residence as well. Okay, Pankaj, little bit awkward answer, all right, but it's not bad. It's not bad, okay, all right. Uh, certainly. Aside from the peace lily, which has been with me for the past 20, 20 years, I have a number of flowers around my home and I truly enjoy keeping them on tables and in the corners of rooms. Not only do flowers give life and vibrance to my living space, 
but also help filter the air. All right, here we go. Repeat after me. Do you like to have flowers in your home? Certainly. Aside from the peace lily, which has been with me for the past 20 years, I have a number of flowers around my home and I truly enjoy keeping them on tables and in the corners of rooms. Not only do flowers give life and vibrance to my living space, but they also help filter the air. All right, notice all of the great elements going on in this sentence to make it a band nine. Certainly, aside from the peace lily, so here I'm referring back to my previous answer. Whenever I can make connections among my answers, I should because that increases my coherence. Okay, so uh, you are being graded on your fluency and coherence for sure. And you can increase that by linking. Also, um, you need to show grammar range. Grammar range is one of the key points that you're being marked on. Here, has been with me for the past 20 years. That's grammar range. I'm using present perfect. Also, saying past 20 years instead of past two decades. Notice how here I said past two decades. Two decades is 20 years. In um, lexical resource, there's a point for the marking which is called effective paraphrasing. And the examiner is looking for that. Band 8, band 9 means that you have to flexibly paraphrase your ideas. So here that's what I'm doing. And then I'm also continuing on by expressing that I have other flowers around my home, on the tables, in the corners of rooms. So on tables and in the corners of rooms is what's called visual language. Visual language, again, is descriptive. It's increasing all of those band uh, score markers for the speaking section. Okay, And then here I'm using a correlative conjunction. Not only do flowers give life and vibrance to my living space, but they also. So not only, but also. So all of those elements make it a very high level response. All right. Okay, students, um, here we have a few more questions. Uh, where would you go to buy flowers? On what occasions would you give someone flowers? Are flowers important in your country? Have you ever received a flower from someone special? I will leave these last four questions for you to answer on your own for homework. You can record it on your phone in MP3 format and send it to me by email and I'll give you a band score estimate for your speaking, okay? Adrian at aehelp.com. Again, students in MP3 format, please, okay? Uh, here are the questions again. The video will be on the YouTube channel so you can go back and look at this a second time if you need to. Uh, tomorrow I will be back with some more live classes. Uh, fantastic job, members, well done. Uh, students, well done, keep it up, keep pushing forward. Remember, you want to perform well on all three parts of speaking, so we will practice the other sections of speaking later. Uh, in the week. That's it for now. Hopefully I will see you all tomorrow. Have an awesome rest of your day. You're very welcome. Happy Sing. Thank you for all of those fantastic flower emojis putting the emphasis on the topic of this class. Bye for now, everyone. Again, check us out on our websites. Join those premium packages, aehelp.com, g-i-e-l-t-s help.com. Spend a couple dollars Save yourself a lot of headache. Bye for now.